I believe I have finally figured out the secret to true oil. I used to rub down with steel wool between each coat. Now, I have sanded down with a 600 grit sandpaper in between each coat. And look at that classy finish. This is only, uh, this is the fifth coat and I do believe this is going to be the last. So that is definitely a secret. To uh, put a heavy coat on and then sand it down smooth. And then uh, the second coat was not a heavy coat, it was a thin coat. And uh, the first heavy coat is to fill in the pores of the wood. And then you sand it down level, sand it down smooth. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, did that come out nice. Wow. Huh. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I, may, I may put one more coat on just to completely seal it. And, uh, all right, now we're going to make a, a sheath and put the edge on. And this can uh, go on to its new owner. Here's why I just quit watching news. Because no matter what channel, no matter what, even a local TV station, Orange Man bad. Orange Man bad. Orange Man bad. <sighs> Global warming is caused by Orange Man. Shooting in El Paso. Caused by Orange Man. And uh, I give up. I stopped watching late night TV, the, you know, the talk shows at night, uh, two years ago, two and a half years ago. And uh, now I just give up on news. Not news. I mean, I do get my news from, but from other sources, online sources. It's here, it's here, it's here. Tony, Redneck Prepper, thank you very much. I know, I know what this is. We spoke on the phone. Let me get this out of the package and I'll show you. Okay. This is going to be my new BC Blades shop sign. And uh, as soon as I get my shop set up the way I want it, I'm going to take a picture and uh, that will be the new <clears throat> picture on top of my home channel. And uh, man, you, you spent a fortune sending this to me and I really appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. Yes, hello. Yes, hello. I do hobbies and crafts too. <laughs> my wife said, yes, hello. I do hobbies and crafts too. <laughs> so uh, Redneck Prepper, Tony, thank you very much, man. Thank you very much. I'll tell you what, this is like Christmas will not stop. Awesome. All right, we're gonna let the forge heat up a little bit. I'm gonna take that rod out and uh, put it in here to heat my oil up a little bit. And then I'm gonna heat treat the Damascus. Okay, I got it out of the forge. Uh, now I gotta temper it for a couple of hours, but I tell you, uh, it's 99 or gonna be 99 today. This is a big metal building with uh, no insulation or barely any insulation. And that's a 10,000 BTU unit that has been fined, just fine until uh, these last couple of days. It's been uh, well into the hundreds with a heat index. So I am going to move this up into this kitchen area here where it's not air conditioned and uh, heat treat this. But let me show you this Damascus pattern. It's beautiful. Look at that. Is that not beautiful or what? absolutely beautiful i'm excited i'll tell you and just oh probably let's see it's probably eight ish nine ish uh i'll bet you just about two o'clock this afternoon i will be uh glowing epoxying those handles on and tomorrow i will be turning this into a knife and then i've got this one also Damascus that Ann Bear for Freedom sent me. 
and I may start grinding the bevel on this this afternoon. All right, let's get back to work. All right, this is the other Damascus that Ann sent me, and um, I've call, I'm calling it Sabine, and uh, there's a river not far from me called the Sabine River, but I've made another knife similar in design to that, similar, uh, I guess real, the real similarity is the handle. I'm calling this the Texas Rambler. I may adjust this handle a little bit. Uh, I may, hold on. I may move that handle, the, the butt of the handle just a little bit. There's plenty of handle. I mean, it's, and I got big, big fat hands so anyway my I'm just telling you about this knife just because uh, it's a recent knife that I don't think I showed you or pattern uh, I'm kind of torn between two woods for the Sabine all right this is going to be Damascus so it's going to be a, a blue a blue black with a silver pattern coming through it showing through it so, I like Goncalo Elvis, and that was what I was originally going to use. But I really like bird's eye maple, and if I use the bird's eye maple, I would put a walnut liner on the in inside, so it would have a eighth inch dark walnut wood liner inside and bird's eye maple on the outside. Uh, I'm gonna let y'all pick. I'm, I'm stuck. So, uh, tell me what you'd like. This will have uh, walnut liners, and this won't. This will just be Goncalo Elvis. And uh, the last dinner skinner I made was this wood, Goncalo Elvis. But a couple years ago, remember Brad and Krista, two family homestead, a big family homestead. No, two families, Daryl. Big family homestead. Well, I made Krista a knife with a bird's eye maple outside and walnut liners on the inside, and it came out. That was actually the nicest knife I've made so far. Actually, the one I'm working on now, the one I got in my house, I'm putting the, the final touches on the handle. To me, that's coming out better than any knife I've made so far, just because, well, it's my fourth knife. And I've finally fallen back into the groove and learned a few more things. And uh, anyway, uh, the knife I got in the oven is going to come out really nice with this uh, Catalox. So, if you want to, if you want to see what bird's eye maple and walnut liners look like, uh, go back a couple of years and you'll see the one I made for Krista. So that's what this is, would look like. Or do you like Goncalo Elvis? Both woods are beautiful. Let me know what you think. All right, I don't know what I'm going to do now. Uh, I may go ahead and put this on the, the jig and uh, get the bevels ground on it. Well, I finally did it. I've been thinking about it for a couple of weeks now. And... Uh, I mounted originally my knife vise, I mounted here. And almost immediately, I started regretting it. And I did it for the reason I put it way down on the end of the table, is so that I could have all this end of the table to work on. But the truth is, I do not use this vise often. Uh, I could actually get away with not having it. And uh, this is right in the way of reaching back here and getting stuff and I'm right-handed so I do need a little room on the right side of this to put stuff that I use constantly and I, I run the risk of leaning over see I have a yeah I have some swelling going on here <laughs> and when this knife is sticking out here and I'm reaching over here for stuff I have woke myself up a couple of times so uh anyway I, I've moved it Oh, it's probably uh, 14 inches down. And another thing is the angle of the light now 
is lower, which is really what you need to see the scratches of the previous grit sandpaper. I had one more light that uh, I had been saving because I didn't know where I was going to put it. I thought that I might put it slowly uh, on the other side here for my sharpening. But I only need one knife for sharpening, I mean one light for sharpening. And this is my old sharpening stand. And this is my new sharpener that uh, Nick Brown sent me up in Canada. And uh, I'm going to take this thing out and I'm probably going to set the new one up a little bit further, like just like that, uh, a little further in. There's my saw blade. That's probably going to go right here, my new logo. But uh, I got to clean it up real nice paint it flat black and then find somebody who could paint fancy letters anyway I've got my other light and I'm gonna uh, measure the distance between here and a corner and measure that distance out here and put this light in the same area so I'll have two lights coming in from different angles and uh, at this stage of the game when you're sanding out the grind lines from the previous grit is when you need the most light all right let me uh, drill a hole, get that in, bolt it in, and wire it up, and we'll be back. All right, round two of the tempering. Another hour, it'll be done. There we go. That's going to make a big difference, big difference. Okay, uh, 30 more minutes. The uh, dinner skinner will be out of the oven. I put some onions in with it. It ought to be good and juicy and tasty when it comes out of there. <laughs> All right, uh, what next? I'm sort of getting ahead of myself. If I go ahead and grind the bevels on this, uh, I want to get that dinner skinner done and handles on it, and then I'll move on to this because what happens is I get too many things on my little pea brain, and I ended up I end up screwing up all of them instead of doing one well. I do two or three poorly, so. I better stick with what I know and just focus on one thing at a time. Okay, I got it all cleaned up. Boy, I tell you, I like the looks of that. I've got that sanded up to uh, 600. The next step is to uh, dunk it in the acid. And uh, while I was drinking my coffee this morning, I was talking to Ricky on the phone, Rick Wallace, Rick Wallace Knives. And uh, he walked me through the process. So uh, I got to go get that set up. I got to cut it with some vinegar. Uh, and I, I got a jar that I'm going to keep it in, but I got to label it, put acid on it just so nobody uh, touches it. I have uh, let Billy know that not to touch anything on that counter. I told him why. It's acid and it will burn him and burn him bad. So he's the only person that might touch it unknowingly my wife she doesn't come down here and if she does she wouldn't touch nothing because she doesn't for, for the very reason she doesn't know what i got in here so let me get out there and uh, get the acid set up and get this in it and we'll be back okay it's in there and i'm going to give you a sneak peek it's only been in there for seconds golly that's beautiful All right, I'm going to give it a few minutes, uh, probably 10 minutes, and uh, I'll take it out, rinse it off, and we'll have a look and see if it's dark enough. That is a thing of beauty right there. Okay, uh, I am going to hit this with some, I'll tell you what, I'm going to hit it with some oil down here. And then I'm going to put some acetone from here back because I got to glue the handles on and uh, I can't have any oil. So I'm just going to oil the blade. All right, I'm probably going to upload this. I'll be back tomorrow.